Shivad. I'm uh, one of the parents of uh, DLRC. I'm also one of the co-founders of a company called Jombe. Hi, my name is Mohit Kundeja. Uh, Suruchan and I are parents to uh, Kabir, who is uh, in uh, P2 at uh, DLRC. We are also uh, founders of Jombe. Uh, we are here to talk about uh, an important topic uh, that many of you might be facing. What's the right age for uh, grade 1? And uh, Suruchan, I thought we would share our experience of uh, uh, having Kabir enrolled when he completed 7. Uh, in uh, grade one, so yeah, um, yeah. I remember when Kabir was uh, close to turning six. He's a September child. Uh, we did come to DLRC, uh, you know, to meet uh, Pawan and you know, see if he could get into grade one earlier, uh, as compared to what he recommends. And I remember Kabir attending uh, the school for a day, and you know, going through the whole drill. And Pawan thought, you know, he could manage the academics uh, pretty well, but he still recommended that he stay, you know, kind of away from. Grade one for another year, and and we did that. Uh, at that point, uh, of course, uh, you know we thought, oh, no, maybe he could have, you know, uh, started early, but we kind of went along with Pawan's recommendation. And uh, Kabir only started grade one. He was when he was very close to turning uh, seven, being a September child. And uh, through that, what we realized uh, that the benefits of starting much uh, a year later uh, came through only when Kabir went through the whole grade one, and even now when he's in grade two. Um, I remember, uh, you know, at certain points in, in through the year and even now, we realized that some of the things that he goes through now, if they would have been a year earlier, uh, probably it would have been a struggle. I we personally feel that Kabir uh, now or when he was in grade one came out to be much more confident by himself, uh, you know, comfortable in his skin, being able to uh, conduct himself, uh, you know, by himself without having any of us around. started grade 1 uh, when it was much closer to 7, um, there was a difference between a 5 and a half year old and a 6 and a half year old theory. He was much more confident about himself, uh, he was much more comfortable in his own skin. Uh, that made him uh, a happy and confident child to be by himself with his uh, fellow students and his facilitators. The second thing that we noticed was uh, he could much better understand what he was feeling, what he was thinking that kind of had an impact on uh, how clearly uh, or better he could communicate um, with his uh, friends at school or even the facilitators, um, giving him the advantage to be able to break a lot of facades. Uh, you know, when you start off uh, in a bigger environment, in a newer setup. Um, so uh, even even now, when he's in grade two, and even at several points when he was doing grade one, at certain points, I remember more than I speaking about that if. If we had to go through this a year earlier, probably we would have a struggling Kabir versus a more uh, versus a happier Kabir. So, uh, what would you like to add? Yeah. So, so confidence, as Suruchi said, confidence, clarity, communication, comfort, care. You know, those six to nine months make a lot of difference in the maturity of a, a child. And from my personal experience, I was the youngest child uh, in my class and uh, always uh, you know, there was a catching up while I did reasonably well and then I eventually made it but it, it was a bit of a struggle and in hindsight if I were to redo this I would have preferred uh, being not the youngest in the class but as one of the older kids because that those six nine months make a lot of difference then and if you look from a long term standpoint the life that we have these few months uh, are not going to make that much of a difference but if you have a confident more uh, uh, comfortable in the skin child it would go a long way uh, in the child's uh, benefit versus trying to save those few months uh, now so that's what we would strongly recommend uh, give your child uh, some bit of time trust uh, the, them to be closer to seven uh, versus closer to five or closer to six uh, yeah. is what our recommendation would be. Yeah, I mean, I would anyway trade off a year of a lifetime versus a happier uh, first year. Yeah, and we all need happier first year. Yeah, and you know, many of us may not remember, but there is a fair bit of involvement required if your child is really young at first grade. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you rather have uh, uh, a more independent. Uh, self-sufficient uh, kid. Of course, you still need some bit of involvement, but you really don't want to have those frustrations uh, trying to. No, I mean, you we, and your child both coping up. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Kabir through the first entire grade. It's been online, uh, and there is minimal involvement. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. hardly that we know, you know, that's what's what's happening and, until he comes up and really tells us. 
he is absolutely fine you know uh, with the technology with starting off school with taking notes with taking homework with kind of you know working through the activities uh, sometimes we are not even aware when his assessments are you know when are his homeworks so he is absolutely comfortable taking care of each of those activities uh, a new subject when he got introduced uh, and he did well he did good for a for a new subject without getting too pressurized about you know how he was uh, going to uh, going to perform given the fact that he is a competitive child so uh, yet being competitive yet being happy is something that we will enjoy having our son go through and that's what makes childhood beautiful uh, some of us remember having really tough and scary first few years uh, at school for what sort of reasons uh, maybe the you know over discipline that was there i don't know why but uh, i'm really happy that we started off a year later our second child will also start off uh, you know a year later and uh, i would highly recommend that uh, to every parent in fact it's at the right time <laughs> yeah in fact i don't think it is later i think it's the right time is going to do 10th standard at age of 17 and 12th standard at the age of 19 so what do you think about that uh look uh the education system is fast evolving you know at this point how that 12th grade is going to be how that 10th grade will even 12th and graduate studies exist even i don't know i mean this pandemic has changed the education system for good and you will only see rapid disruption to that instead of worrying about what age they would be when they complete 10th and 12th you should worry about how well did they do those 10 years now did well did they do those 12 years and what did they learn and are they ready to take on the challenges that graduate and post graduate studies will uh, have for them those few ones here or there right now feel a lot but imagine a confident successful child versus an underconfident coping up child at uh, 10th or 12th grade what would you want uh, more uh, uh, and i'm sure we all want our children to be confident composed and uh, successful yeah i i agree i quite frankly i never thought of it that way oh my god you know my child is going to finish 10th that what was 16 17 whatever that is now i mean it goes to the end and you would say oh uh, you know then marriage at uh, <laughs> what age 22 24 26 30 what's the right age there's no right age it's i think uh, it's good to plan a little bit but 10 years is too long because it's really long i think i i would care what what my children go through today uh, this week this month this year uh, that's all probably uh, who knows next year there will be i don't know i hope we don't have the pandemic but uh, so i i would just focus on that I really did not think that you know what age of you would be when you finish this term. So I don't think that's a question to be answered. Is how is this online journey being like? See, it's honestly uh, DLRC is a. It is adopted digital. Like I remember Pawan, uh, you know, first early uh, pandemic, I was meeting the co-founders, including uh, Pawan and. Uh, he said, "Hey, how are you guys coping up?" He said, "Look, this is the future of learning. We need to embrace it. Right? The future is here. If we can't teach our kids to learn online, eventually they are going to learn uh, through these mediums. Uh, but I think these guys are anyway uh, quite comfortable with technology. Uh, the DLC team is uh, in lot of ways a digital first." Team, they understand uh, different tools segments quite well. So the curriculum was very quickly adopted. Uh, the teachers were trained significantly to adopt to this medium. So from day one, I would give them ten on ten on the way they have handled and embraced the uh, online medium, the assignments, the way the facilitators uh, uh, kept everybody engaged. Uh, the daily learning plans, weekly learning plans. I think they got a good balance of. um having good breaks between classes and a good mix of classes on a, a particular day lot of things to do you know people may think that because it's online the whole uh, uh, the whole the uh, value proposition of dlc primary was to work with hands i don't see that going on i really don't i really did not see that going on there is a lot that kabir did and i have covered the full with so many things that he worked with his hands so they they had a beautiful balance between you know being able to teach language Uh, being able to teach math, being able to teach uh, you know science, and yet uh, have a theme run through all the subjects 
on an online medium with a lot of activities to be done by hand.